Aristotle, a Plato, a um, uh, who else would this be? Uh, a Kant. Um, maybe it's a um, uh, a Nietzsche. Maybe it's um, your Wittgenstein, even right. Uh, these might be all names that you're familiar with, and something that they all have in common is that they're all old white guys, right? And that and that's there's nothing actually terribly wrong with that. You know, you can't you can't fight who you are. You know, you, you, <laughs> you are who you are. Uh, but on the flip side, what it does, it tends to cloud and um, and I think prevent in many ways um, people from being able to understand just how diverse the philosophical landscape is. And I think more importantly, how we as, as practitioners, as teachers, as people who are uh, invested in trying to see more philosophy done um, across the education spectrum, it also means that we get to put our thumb on the scale for who is doing philosophy going forward. So who gets to perhaps become the you know the next person that's uh, sitting in this chair, proverbial chair, so to speak. Um, that's something that we get to we get to affect. So, you know, I think while again the first thing we tend to think of is our traditional guys, uh, you know, folks from the canon. Um, what I want to do is at least share a little bit of uh, of, of data with regards to who's actually participating in the discipline, just who, you know, number for number, who's here, and then kind of uh, broaden out from that and think more about not just um, on the number side of who is here, but also in terms of how we conceive of what doing philosophy looks like. Right? So uh, on the front end, let's think about the numbers, um, who's here, how many people are here. Um, depending on um, who, uh, when you're looking, you might get a little bit more, a little bit less. Uh, so in 2014, Tina Botts et al. did a wonderful piece um, on uh, the state of Blacks in philosophy. And so eight years ago, um, the discipline was about 1.4 or 5% Black. And that's including uh, tenure track professors, uh, adjuncts, graduate students, everybody. So that 1.4%, you know, Let's just say that's not a uh, um, uh, a whole lot of us. And in fact, in 2014, the number they had the literal number of Black people in philosophy was uh, was it 156? I want to say, yeah, 156 Black people in philosophy. That's eight years ago. I presume the numbers might be around 180, maybe now, maybe you know, maybe we cracked 200. Okay. Um, now, on the flip side, so that's, again, that's one version of race, um, but of course, Black people are not the only crew inside of, uh, inside this area, and we're uh, certainly not the only crew that um, is underrepresented across philosophy. Um, we, again, we think when looking at gender, you would find, uh, at least when it comes to women, we've got um, the APA reporting around 26% of women as its membership. This is uh, again, 2018. Um, in 2017, um, Carolyn Dicey Jennings and I think it's Eric Schwitzgeibel, uh, they found that about 25% of faculty in uh, the US departments, 25% uh, of faculty in US departments rated in the Philosophical Gourmet Report were women and 29% of philosophy PhD recipients placed in academic jobs were women. Um, so we're sitting a little under a third of a discipline uh, with women in a period. And um, we got about one percent black, which kind of gives you an idea of um, of racial disparity. And certainly, there are a number of other groups that are even more uh, underrepresented: uh, First Nations people, right, uh, Indigenous folks, um, uh, disabled people. Uh, that's certainly another group that that we we end up being uh, uh, overlooking frequently. Um, then uh, Hispanic and Latinx students, uh, Asian Pacific Islander folks, like right? uh, the in terms of the group we are, we're overwhelmingly white and male. So it shouldn't be all that surprising that when we think of who's a philosopher, we probably think of someone who's likely maybe white and male. So I, you know, I don't want to say, boo, you shouldn't think this. This is, you know, the nature of the discipline is there are a lot of people that are fit that uh, fit that bill. The flip side to this, however, is that there are a lot more people coming through now and there are a lot more people from throughout philosophical history who we can now refer back to because we got a much broader understanding of who and what possesses philosophical value. 
So when we have the canon and we think of the, you know, the Aristotle, the Plato, the Socrates, the uh, the, the Nietzsche, the the Kant, the Hegel, the the big names. One way we can conceive of them is that these are the people who we traditionally think about who've done philosophy. They help do the history of Western ideas. They help us get to how we conceive of the world we're in right now. And they help provide a lot of the big fundamental questions that help ground a lot of the main discussions that we have, whether we're talking ethically, politically, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but they're missing a whole lot, right? And so one thing I, I appreciate is when we think of who and what is doing, pardon, who is who gets to be a philosopher, I frequently think of, well, what kind of questions are we asking? And frequently when thinking of what kind of questions we're asking, we end up getting into uh, spaces that seem to suggest more people of certain kind will be willing to answer them. So myself, I'm an African-American philosopher. I work in African-American philosophy primarily. I'm asking questions about the interconnections between uh, Blackness and, and the political world we're in, how these things shape out. These are other ways of doing philosophy where we're now entertaining and, um, and ascertaining whether or not there are ways in which we can appreciate the world, describe the world, and even improve the world from various points of view that have often been ignored, oppressed, or denied a space to be able to, uh, 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 to be taken seriously. Right? So again, on the front end, we've got things like a lack of a lack of people who can who are participating. You know, there's only probably 200 black people that are in the business. Um, the, you know, the business is about a third woman. And on the other end of that, what those, what that dearth of uh, of, of of participation looks like on one end is a wonderful opportunity for us to reconsider what it looks like on the other end on how we really believe and understand who is doing philosophical work, and that it's not just relegated to the uh, the old white men. It's not just relegated to the majority of the the discipline, which is also white and male. It's a space where all people who have meaningful questions with regards to um, how should we be living? What's the nature of reality? Uh, how should our society be ordered? Uh, what value should we be sharing? What value should we be, not, should we be uh, you know, pitching as a society? Um, and uh, and how ought we be treating each other? These are all key fundamental questions that hold no, um, you know, no one group has uh, has has the uh, has the block cornered on this. And there are a lot of different answers to these questions, and they come from um, a lot of times different informed perspectives. So I want to, uh, I guess, encourage as we're thinking about who's getting to do philosophy and what what does philosophy look like. I want to strongly encourage us to uh, appreciate what canonical philosophers have been able to provide and contribute while also being more than open, but being um, 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 willing to go and find the diversity of thought that is rich inside of both the history of philosophy and the people can, currently doing um, philosophical work. I, I think that's about 10 minutes, Debbie. I hope I didn't do a little too long there, but I think that was about 10 minutes. Yeah. Um... That was roughly about 10 minutes. And now we'd love to open it up to all of you. Uh, what does this make you think of? What are some thoughts and questions that are coming up for you? Michael, go ahead. Um, oh, hello, thank you. Um, why such underrepresentation of other groups um, to your understanding? Um, I, let's go with a number of <laughs> number of reasons might exist for that one there, Michael. Um, so there's the the general concern of uh, so for example, for women, there's the uh, the the report of a hostile work environment, hostile conditions, often uh, sexist conditions that um, that women are working under where, uh, again, their work is not, their work's not being valued. Uh, they're being deployed into service as opposed to having their research taken as seriously and the general sexist tenor of being a working woman in the world. Combine that with uh, being inside of an academic space where the expectation is, if you got it up here, you should be able to be respected as you go. Um, it can be, you know, a, a very literal slap in the face to be disrespected um, 
inside these spaces. And so you find there are a number of uh, of women I've seen, particularly women of color, who, who will flee the um, who will flee the academy. You know, they'll say, "I'm good enough to do this work, but this is I don't have to endure this abuse as part of being able to do this work." Um, so that's I think on one end, it's just the you know the environment can be very inhospitable to a number of uh, minority uh, members of minority groups, uh, uh, whether it's uh, racism, sexism. Uh, homophobia, transphobia, you know, the, you name it, it's, it's baked inside of um, our discipline. And, you know, and it's not to say it's not baked in other parts of academia either, but in terms of philosophy, that's also part of how I, I, that, that's a, those are issues we definitely still have to um, attack and address. Um, so one end would be, I think, in, hospi in hospitality. Um, another aspect um, is there are, uh, I think there are discussions among cultural groups that can often uh, dissuade people from pursuing professional philosophy because it doesn't seem necessarily as practical. Uh, and particularly for, um, say, first-generation students, the goal is frequently, um, we're getting into this space to be able to try to uh, accrue a, a stronger income, a higher earning potential, and a delay of you know five to 10 years to try to earn the PhD to be able to participate in this business may not seem as practical depending on perhaps uh, whatever cultural group or background you're from. And so I do can, I, I, do, I can see that being, um, again, one of a number of different potential pressures that can help uh, limit the, um, um, limit the number of people that are in the business right now. Um, but I, I don't want to, I want to, I, I, I want to make sure to undersell the or underscore it's the inhospitality aspect is likely doing the most work. Um, 